New Age Server Alarm, and this is Mini System Test 22. As you can see, I've got three notifier or two notifier and one silent night addressable BG12. As you can see, they're all getting pulled. The LED on this one's kind of dim, though. And you notice they're flashing green, and that's because the panel is different. I'm no longer using the AFP400. As you can see, it's down here. You can see the 2001 behind it and the SGL1000. It's because I'm rearranging my mini system a bit. Anyway, so the panel I have is black. It's an NFS320 addressable fire alarm system. This is one of the high-end notifier panels. Actually, it's the lowest high-end one. <laughs> it's a single loop addressable system with lots of features in it. One of those features is fire suppression. As you can see, it's got lights, indicator lights for those. Now, this system I have set up is both fire alarm and fire suppression. It's a dual design. So before I do a demonstration, I need to explain how it works. These three pulse stations here, and the heat detector on the right, which is this one, will activate the fire alarm portion, which will sound this MT right here. This Fenwell pulse station, and these two detectors here, are programmed as fire suppression. Now the way this works is, these two detectors are cross-zoned, which means when you trip the first one, It'll go into a pre-alarm function where this wheel, where this wheel lock chime will pulse very slow, like ding, ding, and this strobe light, which I hand wrote FM200, will start flashing. When you activate the second device, or if you activate this pulse station, it'll go into a faster pulse. It'll go into what's called pre-discharge mode, where this will pulse at march time. This strobe will continue to flash and the pre-discharge light will come on on the panel. After a delay, which I have programmed for 10 seconds, it'll go into discharge mode where this horn will sound, this relay will turn on, and then it'll basically discharge. Then after a program delay, I've programmed it for 30 seconds, this strobe light will turn on to let you, this strobe light will turn on, this relay will turn off, this horn will continue to sound, and that will let you know that the discharge has completed. So, first I'm going to demonstrate the fire alarm portion. So, which pull station should I choose? Eeny, meeny, biny, bow. Catch a tiger by his toe. If he hollers, let him go. My mother told me to pick the very best, and it is not you. You. Now this panel does something annoying. It goes into what's called a system initialization trouble after you reset the panel. And essentially this is a short delay where the SLC loop comes back online and all the devices initialize. The less devices that were activated, the shorter it takes. This panel has a similar mode, except it doesn't indicate that it's happening. As you might have seen in some of my other videos, it there was a delay where I'd hit a pulse station and there was a delay before the pulse station would activate. So, now let's go on to these guys. And one thing I didn't mention about the fire suppression is this will go off no matter what. That's a weird noise. So, I'll put the magnet on this detector first. I will demonstrate the abort function when it goes into the pre discharge. So, you'll see that. Now this goes on infinitely. It has, it waits for the second device. There it goes. There we go, I hit the abort. As you can see, abort is active. Now when I release that, it'll restart the countdown. It's back in pre-discharge, it'll restart the countdown. Now it's counting down. And... And...
notes that the post-discharge strobe is flashing now to let you know that it's done. So, yeah, I can stop yelling now. <laughs> Reset. So when the initialization goes away, I'll pull this and you can see what happens with manual release. This is programmed as manual release delay, where it'll actually take 10 seconds before it goes off. It is possible to program it as manual release instant, where there's no delay. Here we go. I silence that. Here we go. It's got a spring loaded toggle switch that self resets, which is kind of nice. So, yeah. There we go. Post release is back on, and we'll do a reset. There. So, that's really pretty much it for how a suppression system works. And in the next mini system test with this panel, I'll be going into detail on what's different between it and the AFP 400. And some of the neat features it has, such as its advanced walk test feature, which is kind of nice. So, but today's video was just mainly just a demonstration of what a fire suppression system does. So, oops. Have a great day, everybody.